I've been investing now for around 10 years. I first started investing when I left university and got my first graduate job at the age of 21, and I've stayed fairly consistent with it ever since. Investing is a long-term game. The investments you make and the results compound and compound and compound, and over time produce something significant. And when you first start out, it can be pretty easy to lose sight of that. So whether you're just about to start your investment journey or you've already begun it, this video is gonna be for you. So in this video, I'll be taking you through the six different asset classes I hold, the value of them, the returns I've received, uh, the lessons learned, the pros and cons and stuff like that, and kind of how I'm structuring them going forward. Let's dive in. Each month, I pay around 2,000 pounds or so into my pension, and that's my company pension and also a private pension I have as well. I'm a big fan of pensions because they allow you to make investments while minimizing tax. I invest via a salary sacrifice scheme, which basically means that before I'm paid, the company takes some of that money that they do to pay me and puts it straight into an investment account. And the benefit of this is basically that the government doesn't tax it at this point. So paying 20%, 40%, whatever percent tax, you don't have to pay that. In addition, on top of it, in the UK, I think companies legally have to contribute as well to your pensions. So not only do you get tax advantages, you also get your company contributing to this as well. Now the negatives of pensions, which is why there's so many tax advantages, is because that money is essentially illiquid. You can't access it until you retire. And I think in the UK, the requirement is, I can't remember, it keeps changing, like the government. I think it's like 65 years of age or 67, 69. It might even increase by the time I retire. But essentially that money is locked away until then. But for me, uh, personally, it's worth it. And in total, in pensions, I have 134,119 pounds invested, and it's typically earning me around 8% uh, year on year returns. This pension is invested quite heavily. I think it's actually all invested in equities. Pretty aggressive strategy on this uh, because obviously well, I can't access this till I'm 65, so I've got another you know, 35 or whatever years to go. And so um, I'm willing to take a bit more risk on these investments. If you've recently joined a job or your graduate scheme, I recommend you look into your company's kind of uh, pension policy um, because it can be a really good way to start accumulating a bit of wealth. The index funds are investment funds that follow a particular benchmark like the FTSE 100, FTSE 250 or the S&P 500. When you put money into an index fund, that cash is then basically invests in all the companies that make up that particular kind of index. If you put £100 into a FTSE 100 index fund, it invests into those 100 companies. I haven't actually put a lot of money into these over the years, but kind of I just have a direct debit, I think, of a couple hundred quid each month. But the current value is around £8,662. Over the 10 years or so, I've earned a 42% return, so pretty decent, which is around 10% year on year, and it comprises overall around 4% of my portfolio. The pros of these is pretty low cost, is a relatively low risk compared to other investments because it's highly diversified. It's very easy to do. You know, a direct debit basically just comes out of my account and makes the investments for me. In terms of cons, the risk is lower or relatively lower. Um, the upsides from these investments is also lower as well. As long as you're kind of getting a inflation beating return, which in my case I am at 10% each year, it's you know gonna be worth it. For ages I've been investing just into index funds kind of passively. My thought, tell you what. I reckon I'm the next Wolf of Wall Street here. I reckon I can make some serious money if I do individual stocks. And it turns out I was wrong. I invested around, it wasn't a lot of money, but I invested around three and a half thousand pounds into individual stocks. And I'll go through them in a bit more information, a bit more in a bit more detail in a minute. So yeah, I invested three and a half grand, they're worth about one and a half grand now. So lost around what, 60 or so percent of those. The app I was using for this is called uh, Free Trade, which I highly recommend actually. It's really good, really easy, low commissions. If actually might be no commission. If I look through the investments I've made, I've got ASOS, fashion, kind of e-commerce store, Chewy. <laughs> Chewy. <laughs> I might read through these investments now, it's a bit embarrassing. But Chewy is a US-based, um, I think it's a pet retailer, online pet retailer, 23 and me. They do all the DNA profiling. I've got some other investments here as well, DocuSign, Peloton, Upstart Holdings. Um, but yeah, I mean Peloton's done really well. It's lost. 84% of the value since I invested. Oh, no, wait, Upstart has beat it. 92% of the value. In the grand scheme of things, it's not a lot of money, but it's a bit of a lesson learned. But overall, it only comprises around 1% of my portfolio. So I purchased a flat in South London around five years ago for around, I think it's like 350,000 pounds on the help to buy scheme, which is a bit of a con. More on that in another video. So if I take the value of the property, take away the mortgage, left with my own personal equity, which is around 55,064 pence. Now, unfortunately, uh, it's London, it's on help to buy, so it's overvalued when I purchased it. 
This has lost around 10% of its value. So it hasn't been a very good investment, but for me, it's a longer term investment. The flat I purchased, you know, I wasn't ever, well, I was never basically gonna buy it and sell it. It's, I wanted to hold it for the long term because it's got great connections to the London Bridge and Charing Cross. Um, and I'm actually currently renting it out to a tenant who pays around one and a half thousand pounds a month. And I kind of wanted to do that until the mortgage is paid off. One of my friends started a drinks business, soft drinks, kind of healthy drinks business. I invested into that. I invested into um, a startup, quite a few other startups in terms of media and digital uh, content generation, and obviously my own company, um, which is kind of kind of in the early stages kicking off, I guess. Oh, there's also a SaaS company as well. Quite hard to actually put a market value on these in terms of how much these are worth. You know, you can't go into Google and type in XXX Limited and it's not called XXX Limited, um, XYZ Limited, let's say, and you know, get a value. So I valued these at the amount of invested, 20,000 pounds or so of equity into these companies. These are quite high risk, but obviously with the higher risk comes potentially greater upsides. So fingers crossed for that in the future. So yeah, I've got 20,000 pounds invested into these, uh, which is around nine to 10% of my total portfolio. I've included cash because obviously this money can be used as an investment. But currently I have around 12,022 pounds sat across my various bank accounts. It's not a great time to be holding cash because obviously inflation is kind of eating away or eroding the value of it. But given I will be purchasing a property in the near future, I need to hold it as cash because I need that money readily accessible. So it's around 5% of my to total portfolio. I think I, it's in a easy access kind of instant saver or something like that. It ticks along at two or three percent, which minimizes the impact of inflation, but it's still essentially losing its value each and every day. I try and minimize my cash balance as much as possible, but you know, I need that money for a deposit, so I'm keeping it there for the time being. So, in total, if we add up the index funds, the individual stocks, the pensions, the property, the equity, and the cash, it comes to a grand total of 231,395 pounds. I did set a goal of by the aim of 35 to have a million pounds worth of assets. So I'm 30 sitting on 230,000 pounds. And if I forecast over the next five years in terms of contributions I'm making monthly and the returns I've been earning, by the time I'm 35, that should be around 550,000 pounds. Quite a way off and nearly 50% off that one million pound target. So I'm gonna to have to, you know, uh, either kind of invest more aggressively uh, going forward or maybe change the time scale of that investment um, target. So my one bit of advice for people that are starting on the journey or have begun the journey already is you know stay disciplined with it, stay consistent and keep going. Investing is a long-term game. It's very easy to lose sight of that. Don't give up, keep investing and you'll be glad you did in 10 years time. Anyway, until next time. <laughs>